the scream of the butterfly. Something in me is dying, so something else can be born. I don't know what is dying. I don't know what is being born. Years and years ago, so long now it is a dream, we loved each other in a place by the sea. We drank each other's laughter and ate each other's fears. You wore bells on your ankles, and I called you spirit sister and the queen of maybe. And you called to me in the supple rhythm of your 20-year-old breasts and thighs and your long golden hair. Then you bolted off into a future where you married a man of shadows who kept your soul in a cage. Your flat belly waxed and waned with a boy and a girl while your soul twisted within like wine dark madrone roots waiting to someday spring forth beneath the westering sun. And now, after 14 years, you still keep my poetry and stories and drawings and love letters in an old cracked black filed folder intact. After 14 years, you found me at the Oregon Country Fair this summer and told me that you'd finally left your husband and asked me if you're still pretty. Am I still pretty? You ask. You? You're beautiful, I tell you. How could it be otherwise? My God, I who see and saw only the goddess in you, who have loved you long and silently all these years, you're ravishing. How could you not be? And you, you couldn't bear my love. Why? Because it was wild and cathartic? Because it held you in a holiness you did not feel? Because it was steeped in a lust that roused the wet heavens? Because it blazed bright and blinding as polished glass? Why? And now, this December night, this first time I visit you in 12 years, you still resist my touch. Why? Because your unchained spirit can't bear the weight of anchoring or for some reason I'll never know. And me, I've loved many women since you, but never so crazy, none so mad, none so beautiful, none so hot, None so holy, not ever a screaming love again, not burning, not twisting, not screaming. My love now speaks in complete sentences, punctuated neatly between the subtle movements of hand or eye, but not screaming, no, not ever screaming. Because if I were to scream, my crystalline memories of you would shatter and plunge like a million unpinned butterflies and so not screaming. No, I hold you too deeply in for that. Beneath all my loves lies an endless sorrow that they could not be you. What patchwork orchestra can make music on such strings? What is it that's dying in me? The endless waiting alone? in the moonstruck glen where we exchanged locks of our hair back before the soft world hardened, keeping tryst, waiting, waiting thirstily by the salty sea, waiting for it to be you again. And I turn and it is you, always, evermore. And was there ever anything but you? Waiting for what? What thread or filament or chain still binds me here. What? Waiting for what? Dying for what? What still binds me? I only know that if you opened your arms, I'd run to you now, like I did on that green hillside 14 springs ago, where I swept you eyes wild with hot laughing tears up into my arms and ran us through a corridor of trees, rolling and tumbling down the bank to lay panting in the warm grasses. If you opened your arms, 
I'd love into you with a force to drive away ghosts and free the screaming demons, but you don't, and I don't. And we sit across from each other, pretending that we're these 34 and 38 year old people in Eugene, and it's almost Christmas, and your kids are out skating, and you make Chinese tea and chocolate, and the beast writhes within me as we pile mountains of dreams behind our chairs and our futures fall in snow and rain in honey sweet rivulets of tears, drinking laughter and clawing at the dirt that uncovers our roots intertwined deep beneath the virgin ground where they've always been. Are you still pretty? You are undying beauty itself cloistered and blooming on a simple green hillside, closer to me than myself, closer than my own blunt hands, which open and pour your essence like sand upon the solid world. And me, I'll get under this death somehow, down where the silence flows in moon dark grottos, and I'll spring back like I always do, and you'll be there as you always are. And I'll love you the way the aching trees love the morning mist always. <laughs>